Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for your interest in, uh, in my uh, speech about my tiny transponder. Um, first, I'm uh, going to introduce uh, myself. I'll do this, just that's it. Um, okay. Um, for the people who don't know me, my name is William Leijenaar. That's how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, my call sign PE1R8, and that's from the Netherlands. I think some people are not radio amateur, maybe uh, so. It's from the Netherlands. And um, uh, I was in the past as a student very active on satellites, um, but recently uh, you graduate, you get a job, and then the last years I'm not so active uh, anymore. Not on the on the radio waves, but um, as a, as a builder, as a designer, as a hardware uh, engineer, I'm still uh, busy in the short hours after my work. Um, my occupation is um, I'm a RF development engineer at uh, NXP Semiconductors. That was uh, Philips Semiconductors before. Uh, department I work for is uh, CETV hybrid models. That's uh, all the cable antenna systems where you receive uh, your television signals at home. Um, it has some link with the transponder. These kind of things, models, they have like 150 channels on one amplifier and that needs to be very linear, these amplifiers. So with a linear transponder, I will uh, go more in detail later. This is also a key factor to be very linear, otherwise you have uh, some interference and problems. So my ham interest designing linear transponders. Why I do that? Because it's it, it's um, very tough to do that in technical way. I think it's one of the uh, most difficult things to do. Um, you need to uh, know from the beginning to the end. It must be all linear. Your LNA, your mixer, uh, and, uh, all your stages, your final amplifier, and that's quite tough. Then, oh, I see. So, um, I'm my membership. I'm also a member of MSAT UK, uh, MSAT North America, and uh, lately also JAMSAT, the uh, Japanese uh, um, organization. Then, for the people who don't know in detail what is a linear transponder, there are all kinds of transponders. Um, the well-known for the students and youngsters and beginners is the FM transponders. Uh, the problem with that is uh, only one user can use the transponder at one time. A good thing about a linear transponder is many users can use it at the same time. So more people, more joy. Another good thing is you can do all kinds of modulations. So some people like SSTV, others like uh, uh, CW, SSB, RT2Y, can all be done. What comes in, that also comes out. So even more people happy. Um, another funny thing is all these modulations can be at the same time. So one can do SSB, next to it can be SST SSTV, another can do CW. So another good thing is even future modulations, the one we don't know, maybe like PSK31, uh, many years ago it was not uh, invented yet, but it can still be used on, was it AO10 or AO7, so that's a good thing. So that's for the user, it's uh, very useful, but then for the transponder, the designer, it's quite difficult to make this, you need quite some experience in uh, in RF uh, technology, that means from begin uh, low noise amplifier IF, the final amplifier AGC, it's it's all included in in such a design. It's not just a one chip solution, like nowadays you have one chip FM transmitter and also in the same chip is an FM receiver and a PLL. Everything in one chip. This application node, you put some capacitors and you're done. But with a transponder. 
it's it's not available. You need to do it all parts by yourself. Um, because of that, it's quite expensive to make. You need uh, special components uh, like crystal filters. You need a lot of stages. So it's also more expensive to uh, to do this. Then um, this is. Uh, some activities has done in the past. Um, I started with the Indian satellite, the Hamsat VO52. I think some a lot of people know it. Um, I started just as a student. Uh, started to build. I wanted to know how you make such a thing. You can do everything with it, but how you make it. So it took me several years. Started somewhere in 2001 or 2000, and then about 2004 I had something working so I think what I'm gonna do with it I can put it in a box and some other project but I think let's uh, show it at some AMSAT TL symposium and I was uh, lucky there was also someone from India and he had a satellite but had no uh, radio due to some uh, circumstances and he asked me you want this radio in space so I said you are kidding and then it was uh, it was uh, the case. So some uh, I sent my uh, prototype to India. There were some uh, some tiny problems with power consumption and uh, the voltage rates. So I changed my design. It was uh, in two weeks time. I changed the design. There was only about the final amplifier. I make a rebuild a new one. I send it to India, and they say, okay, it's passed. It will fly. So that's. The, the one that fly that I have in my hand is made in uh, two weeks time. <laughs> so I have it in my hand at my home, I send it to India, they put it in the satellite, they paint it black. And uh, this is the, the, the Hamsat and it's launched in uh, 2005 and it's still working in orbit. So yeah, for new students, so don't think it's never possible just go forward it and someday you uh, you get something in space so after that there was some emptiness yeah what are gonna do now I have something in space so what's the next goal so then I uh, I made a transponder for uh, MSAT uh, phase 3e it's uh, all analog so it's the old fashion technology but then the softly defined radio uh, was available so it they choose to use that uh, radio. Um, I think it's, it's a good choice because new technologies should also be uh, be checked and tested. Then I wanted to yeah to have a uh, chance to make my transponder smaller. I done a trial to I have no picture of it here, but uh, the Indian satellite in the Hamsat had. Uh, uh, 16 centimeter by 10 centimeter use a gyro card format uh, transponder and I wanted to make something similar but then um, more easy to build it was uh, quite difficult to tweak and all these kind of things so but to make it easier for all people who like it to uh, to buy it or to put it in in a satellite but that project failed because it was quite heavy a lot of uh, filters, that's a conventional way, like IF with filters. So I just stopped that project. I think this is not going to work. I, nobody wants it. I want something, uh, and that time Cubesa was coming up. I think I must uh, be smart. I must uh, make it that it fits in a CubeSat. And then, of course, temperatures minus 20 to 100. And then to make it more easy, for daily life. We all use cell phones with uh, known lithium ion batteries. So my goal was to put it on 3.7 volts. One cell phone battery on it and let's go. Another thing is I don't want to make it sp uh, specifically for satellites. There also I had some requests if it's possible to put it as a terrestrial or on a mountain or on a balloon. So I want to make it flexible, so it must be fully programmable. And 
the most of all no tuned de no tuned design so not all kind of filters that need to be adjusted and can drift away and so this is the final uh, design I have it's quite small I put it in just uh, you can see this is a complete uh, transponder so 70 centimeter input 2 meters uh, output The size, um, I'm gonna put here, because cube sharp 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, so I'll make it the uh, nine by nine, but that's included uh, one centimeter mounting strip. So actually, the transponder itself is seven centimeter by seven centimeter. Uh, I didn't have a cube sharp box, so I didn't know how this, the, the mounting is. So I just make it myself somehow. Um, this can all be adjusted. This, uh, in my design I can change it and um, so in case uh, some CubeSat club thinks okay it doesn't fit, it can all be made uh, like that. And here is an example where I put uh, the board in a CubeSat alike box. Make it... I don't have cu original CubeSat box, too expensive uh, for me. <laughs> so, but you can see it fits. So that's uh, that was the goal. Then the good uh, the, the special thing I made is 3.7 volts. This is just a cell phone battery. Okay, it's drawn, but I also have here a, a battery, 3.7 volts, and I can demonstrate it that it works. A uh, good thing about that one is uh, high capacity and low weight. So we want to have low weight for the satellite. All oh, a balloon. Um, last ham radio event in, uh, in Friedrichshafen in Germany. One of the transponder has flown on a balloon. So that's uh, was a found it. It's very low weight. Then to make it uh, flexible for all kinds of missions not only satellites but also balloons terrestrial etc it must be programmable so there's a connection goes to a programmer on a on a computer can also demonstrate it have a laptop and programmer with me uh, input frequency output frequency can be programmed the there is a beacon on board cw beacon can be programmed, C CW message can be uh, programmed, it's very flexible. It's all done with a Texas instrument, MSP430 microcontroller. These are very known for their very low power consumption, something less than 50 microamp. So just for programming the PLLs, that's enough. And uh, the block circuit, so to show uh, inside details. So input signal comes uh, in 70 centimeters. There will be a filter um, to cancel out also two meter uh, uh, TX uh, signal. It's also ESD uh, protect protected. So amplifier, and then. Uh, it, it will be uh, filtered again and mixed to the IF frequency. Uh, in the IF frequency, there will be the set the bandwidth. This is done with uh, crystal uh, oscillator, uh, crystal filter. Sorry, crystal filter uh, makes uh, very steep edges on both sides, so that uh, the the other stations next to it or other like uh, repeaters will have no interference from uh, from this radio. Um, it's followed by an, uh, another amplifier, but this one is uh, with uh, AGC. So at that point I can uh, can attenuate the signal, so all the rest of the circuitry will not be overloaded in case of a strong signal. Then the IF signal will be uh, mixed again to a second uh, IF. That one will be amplified mixed again down to a two meter signal a driver final amplifier and then it goes uh, comes back to the 
to, to the earth. Then the AGC circuit, this one, is monitored at the output. So actually the output I'm monitoring. So even when any stage is drifting or the bias is, uh, uh, is drifting away, it doesn't matter. We monitor the output, that the output signal is, uh, is, uh, is okay. Then all the oscillators are PLLs, here, here, all PLLs, controlled by the microcontroller. And the microcontroller, oh, this side, also has a beacon oscillator. So this frequency can be set by the microcontroller and also the it will be switched on and off to create a CW uh, uh, message. The output uh, power is about uh, uh, it's 23 dBm, actually, I didn't change it. Um, it's not that much, it's, uh, it's 200 milliwatts, but on this uh, size with this uh, low voltage, it's, uh, it's quite a lot, because I didn't find any final states that can give uh, good power levels at this uh, low voltage, and there are transistors that give like 2 watts, but they are not linear. So this uh, transistor can give more power on FM, but we need to downgrade it to be linear. Then some more interesting things. This is the whole circuit again. So the output I display here. So you can see it's very flat. I should maybe zoom it out, uh, but. That's also one of the things uh, I wanted to have. I done like the um, handset transponder is done by the saw filter, and that one had a really bumpy uh, filter characteristics. And I didn't want that. I want something good, something nice, like it should be. This cost me uh, most of the time of the development from for the transponder to keep it to make it flat, good steep edges and to keep it also over temperature uh, well. Um, then some more features about uh, the transponder. To make it um, useful also for other projects, like a CubeSat, maybe they want to have uh, another transponder, uh, like two or three transponders, and every time you need to create another antenna and a LNA not needed because there is a tap on the LNA so here we and a, like a CubeSat group or a balloon group they can create their own receiver like a command radio or whatever when you don't want 70 centimeter you can do it on the IF there also in, uh, is input and output it's two way so like a PSK31 or uh, telemetry, or I don't know, RTDY, you can all inject or extract from this point. For the people who, uh, who like very stable uh, signals, there can be an external uh, reference oscillator, it's also possible. It's all uh, already on the board and can be used when needed. Then the LNA, the tap I present here, you can see it's uh, so more than 10 dB gain, so that's in case you, you need to have somewhere your radio to receiver at this place. Uh, here I make a sweep, and this picture I didn't make a sweep, I put a two-tone, but the idea is uh, similar. I tap here, so on the input I put two tones, and I tap it out here. So uh, this could be, uh, I don't know, a telemetry uh, uplink or a command radio or whatever. This can also be injected, so it's two-way. Some more details. Um, 70 centimeter is the input frequency. Can be uh, programmable, all this uh, PLR programmable. Output frequency is on 2 meters, also programmable. Output power single tone is uh, 200 milliwatts. 
so when more stations it will, uh, will go down it will all be controlled by AGC supply voltage uh, lithium ion voltage 3.7 volts current is uh, quite high because of the final state I'm now working on uh, uh, what do you call it? This uh, helaps uh, uh, principle. It's uh, that's uh, the next thing I want to integrate it. But for the moment, I, I keep it like this. Design is a real class A output amplifier to keep good. Um, uh, yeah, to keep <laughs> it very linear. Um, there are also protection uh, circuitry inside. Low voltage switch off. When your battery is going down, like on a balloon, I uh, experienced some time before, then your battery voltage goes down. And suddenly it gets to a state that your oscillators and amplifiers are not linear anymore, and everything is going to wobble or mm, kind of things. Then actually it, the voltage is too low to, uh, to operate the trans uh, transponder. So then it should switch off. So it has a low voltage switch off. So in case you make uh, uh, some some something some balloon mission just put a battery on it when it's going under a certain voltage that uh, is too low it's a switch off you don't need to make a circuitry around it it's already integrated of course a high current fuse uh, in case you have a whole system then I don't want my transponder when it fails that all the mission is over we have already several missions on satellites that fail due to some kind of uh, short circuits. That's uh, I don't want that on my name. <laughs> um, the size on the whole PCB, so the transponder is some smaller. It's, uh, it's less than a CubeSat. The weight is uh, less than 30 grams. I think it was like uh, three one point coins. So a letter is about 20 grams. So very very low. Then onboard beacon, so no circuitry around it to, to think how we're gonna make a message. No, it's already there. Frequency, message, and the power is all programmable. And extra options is uh, external oscillator, LNA tap, and IF tap for other parts of a satellite. You can imagine this. This is just a PCB. It's quite difficult to handle because the connectors the connectors are very small and yeah then I had to think uh, how can you test it so I make a kind of evaluation board that's this one so that's a good uh, base uh, from aluminium very strong so no uh, risk of, uh, of cracking something uh, integrated is a 3.7 volt regulator so you can put in just an adapter between 5 and 15 volts and it already works outputs uh, with a cable to SMA connectors that, that is uh, widely available in the uh, ham world and with all, uh, all kind of taps out of it so you can also test that one So this um, this the demo board is a demo board, but it can also be used as a terrestrial transponder. Just put it somewhere in a on a high mountain in a box with a power supply and can already run. So make a whole complete uh, system of it. Um, so that's a transponder on the evaluation board. Adapter. So this is a simple adapter. Here is the, the programmer for the microcontroller via USB port, and here it's going to the to the transponder board. So I can deliver programmer, transponder board, power supply, and I can also give uh, example source code. I say example because it's very basic and. I'm not a professional programmer. I know quite basic how to program the PLLs, but that might be a good uh, good student uh, project to make a flexible program. 
Oh. So possible missions. Um, yeah, the very known is the CubeSat. That's uh, my my reference what I used here uh, for. Um, I read al already some proposals uh, on high mountains, like in uh, in Japan or in uh, Austria. Uh, in theory, it could also be on uh, on a kite. I didn't do it yet because uh, it's quite expensive, but maybe. There are some very high altitude uh, kite projects to be possible. Um, and another thing on a balloon. And this uh, this has al already been done. Um, on 19 June in, uh, in Austria this year, there has been a balloon uh, uh, mission uh, successfully done and uh, also uh, recovered. And then one week later, 26 June, then was 3D the ham radio, and uh, it also fly, and uh, also successfully successfully uh, flown. Only they didn't still didn't recover it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe when you see uh, this kind of box and uh, with my transponder in it, there's a serial number on it, so <laughs> I can trace it back. <laughs> so the one, uh, the person who uh, who has it, he can use it, but it will be found uh, very easy then. I mean, with his number. <laughs> um, but that's also uh, it's already done. It's already proven. And yeah, that's a funny thing that uh, from satellites we can also use it in uh, in balloon missions. Then. Uh, about the whole system, <coughs> I have uh, data sheets. It's available and information. I have a website, uh, Lena Electronics. Uh, everything you can find there, and uh, my address, etc. Et um, with the whole system, yeah, source codes. Of course, I deliver. Um, uh, I don't deliver this in a kit. I already got many requests. Do you deliver it also as a kit? So I don't know. You must be very good in soldering. It's all 0402. Even for me, I'm young. I I use a microscope to uh, to, uh, to solder it by hand. This actually the this is not soldered by hand. The prototype is soldered by hand. These ones are really reflow soldered. So with solder paste in, a, in the oven and reflowed. And then with microscope I check it. Um, I also do this for a job, so it's, it's not only I'm quite used to that. I know for the elderly people it's it's it's, it's difficult, but that's why I deliver it as a full tested and working device. So it's like plug and play for the computer freaks. Um, of course, I give technical advice and uh, and, and help if needed. Um, I had some people who came to me. Yeah, this is uh, mode UV, but I want mode LS. I say, okay, I'm now working on uh, on a project to uh, to change it to uh, mode LS. So, in case you need something different, just let me know, and I can see what I can do. That means also the mounting, everything. It's, uh, this is just an example. Uh, when you want something different, I can. Uh, it's possible to uh, to adjust. So, thank you for your interest. Um, variety of time for questions, but also I can give a demonstration when uh, when there is interest. So. The, uh, uh, the furious testing uh, uh, that was going on in very public environment right before VO52 flew, and I congratulate you on uh, on that accomplishment. That was uh, really good. But considering its small size, uh, and in particular uh, the selection of UV as opposed to VU, 
uh, is the bandpass filtering done on the board from the output stages or is that external done at the antennas? No, no, there's on board uh, it's filtering. Uh, okay, I, I can put the two antennas next to each other. Yeah, well, I, okay. Well, for 23 dBm, that's very impressive. Then that's if it's all if it's all on the boards there. Yeah. Yes. Because that's because you picked it's, the more difficult. It's uh, one of the difficult parts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, William. Uh, two. Uh, two from two from the internet. Sorry. Um, Two questions from the internet. I'll speak up. One: Have you got a bu budget guide price for the fully furnished, uh, fully built well, what, plug and play? What is budget? I, it's, uh, it's lower than the the average CubeSat uh, models. Yes, but I think it's higher than the, the amateur normal price. So it's a thousand or two euros. Uh, a complete system for two thousand euros. Okay. Thank you. And it, do you have any plans to make it completely sort of CubeSat compatible with a PC-104 connector type thing? You mean if I make a complete CubeSat? No, if you, would you, are you considering building a board that's a UV transponder that, that is compatible with a PC-104 CubeSat set of connectors? Can be done, yeah. Thank you. Only I don't have this uh, CubeSat board and structure because it's out of my budget. This is all privately done. Uh, so I don't have a big sponsor to, uh, to do this. <laughs> so, but it's possible, yeah. It's no problem. I'm open to that. Thank you. Yeah. Wait for the mic. Okay. <laughs> Um, I was wondering, do you have a uh, 3.7 volt interface, but most CubeSats have 5 and 3 volt 3 available, regulated. Um, and also, where does the 650 milliamps standby current go to? Because that seems to be a, a huge current for standby. Yes, um, you must consider it's very low voltage. And low voltage uh, efficiency is, is not that good for uh, most amplifiers, because current is uh, increasing. And uh, that's also the problem. The most current will go in the final amplifier. So the transponder is about 400 milliamps for 3.7 volts. It can be, I have some ideas to uh, lower it, but it needs some different components. Well, what, do you mean? what do you mean with standby then? Standby, just uh, no station. Because. Okay, waiting. but then the, the PA is still running. Yes. Ah, okay. So when, yeah, uh, you can make some circuit maybe that detects a strong signal and then switch on. Yeah. Uh, the final so the P okay, the PA is always on in yes. in cases. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because I was comparing it to Delphi C3, which has a 23 milliamp standby current on mm. 343. Yeah. But that's on receiver only. So if someone wants to use your transponder also to have a command uplink, for instance, to their spacecraft, they should have a way to switch off yeah. the rest and yeah. use it for that. So, but that's not incorporated yet. No, it's not incorporated, no. Okay, thanks. Okay. When you want to use it for ballon, uh, ballon affair or something like that, uh, wouldn't it be possible to incorporate so that you can, can transmit the GPS signal so you get the position? Is GPS there an signals? Yeah, GPS signal from an external GPS so you know where your balloon are. Is there an input for that or is that something that is available? Or? Uh, I, I don't understand. Okay, if you want to use your transponder in a balloon. Yes. It's quite important you know where your balloon are so you probably fit a GPS also. Would yeah. it be possible to fit the, the GPS data into the telemetric module and yes. then transmit the GPS data? Yes, possible. Have you tried that? Uh, no, not, not uh, with GPS, but uh, on the IF, I have a tab, so you can put in... Uh, you see. Yes, you have an IF tab, but... Yes, I have an IF tab. That can, you can put in anything uh, yeah. you but like. Uh, it can be, yeah. Only it's a CW then. 
because the the beacon is only CW. Yeah. But then it can yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. Possible. Yes. Okay. okay. I can give a demonstration uh, when there is time and interest. Yeah. Is that time? Okay. So 